came on the trail, headed out to the yurt for the first time after a big snowfall. Uh, we had over the past few weeks, anywhere between 20 and 40 inches, depending on where you measure. We had some big winds recording in the 70 mile an hour range for gusts. So as we were away, we were pretty worried. The trail is a, a quarter mile long uh, from where we park to the yurt and it's been snowmobiled a few times. So it's packed down in which I can uh, just walk uh, with my boots on rather than skis or snowshoes. Now that the four wheel is out, you can see how much snow actually got in here through the door. Generators covered up. Just took us a a day to get back to back to good order, but all in all, pretty good. I'm learning, I'm learning a lot.
here's our rug and we're gonna try to, I think what we're gonna do is we put down these ropes first so we can cinch it down. And then we're gonna throw this tarp down so that we can burrito the whole thing. Cinch it down really tight and then bungee it onto the sled and it could work. best food I've ever eaten is that which I've pulled out of the water, picked from the earth, or been given to as a gift. Story of this fish, silver salmon, or also known as the coho salmon. You can find those all over the world, from Bering Sea in Alaska all the way down to Baja, California. You'll find them swimming around and they're just everywhere, and their range is absolutely amazing. And the most amazing thing about these salmon is that they go back to the very spot where they were, were born, a very little stream and estuary, way up some Alaskan river, and they lay their eggs in the exact spot, same spot that they were hatched.
So these are the stories of grandeur that Leif Erikson. What was in my mind when I went up to my first Alaska trip up there to visit my relatives. And they lived just a couple miles, five minute drive from the mouth of the Swanson River that pours into the Pacific or into some bay that then joins the Pacific. So I went up uh, a couple months ago there and got a hold of my cousins. I'd been trying to texting with them for quite a while. I'm hearing tales about the silver salmon and they're running. They're going to be running. And so we loaded up the boats on a trailer and headed to the, the Swanson River. And it's about a two-day paddle back down to the ocean where we get picked up. And you just can see up ahead on the curve of the bend when the water gets a little deeper, you see the fins of the salmon just cresting. And you know it's, you know it's going to be hot in there. And so you put some eggs, some salmon eggs on your line, you cast it out there, and you see one of those bobbers go down, and you all yell fish on, and you pull in your, pull in your lines, and it's just a battle with a thick 12-pound salmon jumping up over the canoes, trying to get it in the net. And the most amazing part is, is joining this tradition that all the animals of the area and all the people of the area throughout the existence of people and throughout the existence of all these animals have partaken in the absolute feast and gift that these salmon give us. They spawn here, they go out to the ocean for a few years on a great epic hero's journey of their own and they come back to the exact spot and then they just live there until they die eating other eggs. And all the animals feast and gorge on them and they just give their bodies back to the stream. And getting to partake in that and sit around a fire with family they haven't seen in years. And then to be able to bring that home as well, pack a cooler full and give to friends around and just like see the joy as you hand them this unique rare gift of a silver salmon. Thanks for taking the time and watching our video. We appreciate it. How lucky we are to have friends like Justice to share his gifts and stories with us. If you'd like to support us, you can follow the Patreon link below and keep an eye out for the next video.